The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, bunny, let's talk about books. You see, people say, people always say to me, hey, Steve, oh, are you okay? Yeah. I heard about your mother-in-law. Can I help you with anything? Yeah. Anything at all? To which I say, yeah, you can start by not talking to me like I'm a baby, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was fine until you came at me with that ridiculous vocal font in your throat. Yeah. Just talk to me like I'm a normal person. Don't 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 change your voice just because you heard something bad happen to me. That's just going to piss me off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People also say, "Hey, write what you know." And what I know is that I have been a loyal and motivationally lazy employee at my local bookstore for 17 years now. My career could drive for Pete's sake. Well then, yeah, that's Pete, that's that 17 years is like the amount of jail time a black person has to do for a broken tail light. Yeah. 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 I it, being, it, being lucky that they didn't get shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as such, I really do have my fingers on the pulse of the book world and I am here to thrust my fingers down your throat ears with this week's installment of Notes from the Bookstore. Notes from the Bookstore is America's number one totally real and 100% fake retail literary podcast segment, now <laughs> celebrating its third year anniversary in an alternate dimension where it has been around for three years. Mm -hmm. So first off, first off, I have got some good news and I have got some bad news, but... Yes. Here's the interesting thing about this, okay? Get this. I only have one bit of news. What? Okay. So, watch in stunned, bemused amazement. Watch on this podcast as I magically turn a bad bit of news into a good bit of news using only the powers of retail-based magic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really, this is this is probably the first ever literary themed retail based podcast magic trick ever haphazardly posted to the interwebs. This is historic, is what I am saying. This is historic. Right we here. have had a lot of <laughs> we have we have had a lot of historic episodes in this section alone. Yeah, quite you know, impressive. like I've mentioned before, we are we are probably the only podcast that is covering the seedy underworld of the book industry. Yes, true. Absolutely mm -hmm. true. So here it goes. This month, we got a 65% on our secret shop. Is that good or bad? That's bad. That's a D. And that is bad. The, the secret shop isn't a test to see if we're going above and beyond. It's not a test to see if we're the best that we can be. It's a test to see if we're doing the basic functions of what we have been hired to do. <laughs> so the fact that we're getting a 65 is not good. Yeah. We're getting a D and that's bad. That's a sign of failure right there is what it is. So bunny. Yes. Join me in going. Oh, Oh. Oh. oh, ah, yes. But now, but now, watch on this podcast. Watch in stunned, bemused amazement yes. as I get that bit of bad news and magically transform it into good news. All right. Yeah. We got a 65%. But all the other stores in our district, for whatever reason, Got scores in the 40s. Nice. I tried to say that like Jean Ralphio from Parks and Recreation. Yeah. When you, you guys have a couch I can crash on because I am technically homeless. 
Yeah. yeah. So, uh, first off, magic, boys and girls. I changed it with the power of magic. Mm-hmm. And secondly, suddenly our 65% doesn't look that damn bad. Yes, because there are more people. There are people who are more inept than you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Compared to the other stores, compared to them, I'm Stephen fucking Hawkinson. <laughs> and I'd like to do a, a quick aside here regarding cussing. Yes. On the notes from the bookstore segment. Yes. Originally, I wanted this notes from the bookstore segment to be as clean as possible because I am a member of a number of bookstore related uh uh facebook groups and i yes. thought that i could share my uh very proud uh, notes from the bookstore segment with these groups but uh one or two of the groups really quickly shot me down with that oh, one of yeah? the reasons is one of the reasons is you're not supposed to share on the group anything of yours that you created on your own personal website that you could make money off of. And I tried to tell them that <laughs> there is no money coming from, yeah. the, from the bookstore or the Pope on film or any of this stuff that we spend a lot of time on, but they, mm-hmm. they shut down, they shut down the promotion of notes from the bookstore. So, uh, so what I, what I think I'm going to do is there's a employee of mine that's about to leave and, I think that right before she leaves, I'm going to see if she can share it because I think that's a workaround. Ah, but nice. anyway, um, now that it is fairly impossible for me to share my good uh, literary themed notes from the bookstore segment on any of the actual bookstore Facebook groups that I'm a part of, shit damn ass balls crap bitch cunt. Yes. So. Well, let's that, we got that going for us. Let's also admit we we really kind of sucked at it too. Oh yeah, no, we were horrible at it. We we, were we really at sucked at at doing a clean show, a clean portion of the show. Yeah, yeah, it's just impossible for us to do. Yeah. So, so this week, since we're on topic, I wanted to focus on secret shops. Yes. And for the un- uninitiated out there, secret shops is the act of a major corporation or any sort of business, really. It doesn't have to be a major corporation. A business hiring a person to pretend to be a customer, but the customer has actually been fed things that they're looking for, and then they go back and rat you out mm-hmm. to the suits. And uh it's a great business to be in first of all if you can get to be a secret shopper go for it because it's a wonderful job it's not cool and i don't believe in secret shops when i was first hired secret shops uh, 17 years ago secret shops were a huge deal and then my first year and a half that i spent at the store in arizona oh man it was all about secret shops and all about secret shops and and uh, there was one secret shop that happened there were so few people in the store that i was literally everyone on the secret shop so i got the st- that store it's first 100% on secret shops and it was all me nice so i have a habit and and, and this is important for later in this segment but i have a habit of getting stores 100% because i'm amazing so then I went to Sacramento and they stayed secret shops stayed an important thing for, I don't know, two years, three years. And then eventually, uh, uh, maybe four years. I don't know. Eventually the corporation just said, yeah, we're stopping secret shops. We're, we're not going to do this anymore. We're spending a lot of time and money and it's just pointless. We are no longer doing secret shops as a company. We're not doing it anymore. Yeah. And then, immediate and then and then what like six months ago eight months ago the company just said psych we're doing it again (laughs) and so now it's just that's that's just what we're doing you know the secret shops i don't think 65 is is bad at all really i mean look at it you know um we're we we have a lunatic for a president. We are on the brink of civil war. 
the earth is literally trying to kill us True. you know um and in this particular job you're booksellers you can get a pink slip at any moment you really can yeah. it's hard to give a fuck if if there's some dust building up on the bookcases you yeah. know yeah just yeah, like that's yeah, a good point. yeah i would uh i would dust but we can all be dead tomorrow you know yeah 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 so in that case that yeah, that's a it's a good way to look at it. I'll have to remember that. Yes. Now, it's probably important to note that not all major companies hire secret shops. JC, I know for a fact that JC Penney's doesn't do secret shops. Yeah. And I know that because my two teenage daughters both have gerbs. <laughs> both of my teenage girls have gerbs, money. One of them, my 15-year-old has a gerb in fast food, and my 16-year-old has a gerb in retail. Mm -hmm. Interesting fact that uh, a lot of our listeners probably do not know, J.C. Penney's is still a thing. Yeah. Interesting. That's weird. And it's weird. I go, I recently went into the J.C. Penney to find like a nice suit for Maxwell for my mother-in-law's funeral, like a nice outfit for him. Yeah. And it's so weird to go into a J.C. Penney's and go, wow, this looks the same as it did 10 years ago, mm -hmm. as it did 20 years ago, as it did 30 years ago. It looks the same. Yeah. The only difference is there's a lot more Minecraft shirts. <laughs> Besides that, JC like, Penney's, JC Penney's, and Macy's. You know, yes, yeah. I, I, I don't know what keeps either of them afloat. I mean, I can kind of understand Sears, you know, because they're like the only competition to Best Buy. You yeah. know, yes. Yeah. There's like no other electronic places anymore. Yeah, it's weird. You know, but JC Penney's and, and Macy's. Who goes in those places? Yeah. Yeah. I I don't get it. But whenever you talk about secret shops, it always reminds me of the script that a friend of mine wrote. Uh, yeah. And I, I had actually only read like the first 10 pages. She wanted my opinion. But it was called Buddy Dinkelmeyer Mystery Shopper. Okay. And it was... And when I was reading it, I saw Rain Wilson in it as, 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 for the part. Yeah. You know, I was like, that's who I would cast, you know? Nice. And that's just off of House of a Thousand Corpses. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. not off of Community or anything. Because this guy was, was super serious, but he was an idiot. Almost, a, almost a, an Inspector Clouseau of the mystery shopper world. Nice. <laughs> so anyway, go ahead. Freaking secret shops. So ah, I dropped my recording device. So sick of secret shops. Well, well, so how how does one become a secret shopper? Do the act? Do, do they actually answer the ads in the back of the Inquirer? Um, I can tell you exactly how people uh. Or at least how how my wife became a secret shopper because my wife is a secret shopper. Oh, um, my my wife just one day we were in Sacramento and she said I I need to 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 supplement our income. What if I became a secret shopper? And I'm like I don't even know how you go about doing that. How do you even become a secret shopper? So she did some googling and she said it's like oh I found this company, and um, if you give them ten dollars. Uh huh. They, they will. They will uh, put you in their list of secret shoppers, and then companies come to them with secret shops, and you get to pick and choose which one you want to do. And if they choose you, you get to do the secret shop. And immediately, I'm like, wait, you have to pay them ten dollars, ten dollars, or fifteen dollars, or twenty dollars, something like that. And I'm like, that sounds like a scam. I don't know. How yeah, do that that always gets me nervous. That becomes a that sounds like a scam, and she said, "Ah, oh, what do you have to lose?" And she did it, and then immediately, like like literally uh, after like 
probably PayPaling them like the 20 bucks, she was like, oh, my God, I just got a Harley Davidson secret shop. And so, yeah. like, we went to the Harley Davidson store that was in town pretending to be in the, you know, just looking for a motorcycle. And, and we had to ask them all these specific questions and get their names and stuff. And mm. next thing you know, she, my wife is just bouncing around doing secret shops left and right. And, and like, I don't, I still don't trust a company like that, but it definitely yeah. worked for her because she has just not stop doing secret shops. She is a secret shopper. Nowadays, back in the day, we used to go, okay, we're going to go to this town and go to this store and look for this thing. Or, okay, we're going to be going to this uh, store and we're going to be looking for this type of thing. And then we need to go to another employee. We need to do this and that. Eventually, it became a bit too much and we were doing a lot of driving. So nowadays, we still do secret shops, but only food. And it's wonderful. <laughs> So we get hired to go to this uh, Arby's or this Brahms or this yeah. um, sit-down family restaurant or this Vans pig stand, and we get to order whatever we want and see if they – most of the time it's, oh, uh, will they offer more? Yeah. Oh, you know, for just 45 cents, you can get the blank. And then – when we're done with that, when we're done with our food, we go through the drive through because there's always that part. You have to do both things. And then my wife comes home and she writes about it and she sends them a copy of the receipt. And in a couple of days, we get paid back the, the amount we paid for the food plus a little tiny stipend. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome. Basically, we're hired. We're paid to eat food around town. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I it's, I had I had gotten I had gotten scammed on that get paid for reading books thing. Yeah, remember that one? Yeah, no, I remember that. Yeah, it was seventy five dollars for a piece of shit book. You know, which which sucks when you're out of work. You, I mean, because you're doing this because you need money. You yeah. Know? So that's a really shitty thing. I mean, like that should be illegal. You know. Yeah. Um, and I, and I tried it, you know, it had a list of publishing houses and things like that. And they give you kind of a form letter and you mail it out to all, to all the publishing houses. And I was, I was thankful for the publishing houses that wrote back and said, um, it doesn't really work like this. Yeah. I was like, okay, cool. And I stopped. Man. These scams are that sucks. Yeah. Yeah. But um yeah, so so Emerald has a job in fast food and Amber has a job in retail. And uh the funny thing is, is that I always like to hear people's work talk, like Natasha used to work in the kitchen yeah. of a like rest home and she would come home and, and she would just be complaining about things. And I, I always love to hear people's work talk. Yeah. It's always interesting because a lot of work talk is just, I don't know, you get to hear about what they do and the things that upset them. It's really interesting to me. Emerald is, so Amber and I are really connecting with work talk. Uh -huh. So Emerald comes home and she's like, oh man, today sucked. And I'm like, ooh, work talk. Talk to me about your work talk. What are you complaining about, Emerald? And Emerald's all, well, first I had to spend most of the day in the drive through and that sucks. You know how people are in drive through and I'm like, okay, I'm tapping out because I have no frame of reference here. Yeah, I never had to work food, you know. I and uh, like, like, I I don't know how people are in drive throughs I never do the drive through. Mm -hmm. The passenger side, the driver's side window in my car doesn't roll down, so I really, I never do drive through. My only frame of reference is a Dane Cook's first album when he was still considered funny. Emerald's got to be on that job for at least a year now, right? Yeah, apparent Brahms is like Brahms is technically an ice cream restaurant. Yeah, but they also do food. But the food is the the burgers are so effing good that I don't know when the last time was I had actually got ice cream from them. So I forget that they're primarily known as an ice cream place yeah. but they're primarily in the midwest they're in uh all over oklahoma and arkansas and uh i don't know missouri and texas and like nowhere else mm -hmm. but here they're like starbucks 
Oh, okay. They're just everywhere. Like, we're a small-ass town, and we've got two or three Brahms. Mm-hmm. It's one I, of those I've never even heard just, of it. Yeah, and apparently, because they're like a, a local company, and they're, they're a small company, they hire at like 14 or 15. So yeah. Emerald's had this mm-hmm. job for a real long time. Yeah, like, yeah, she has. Like, I, 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 I'm proud of her. That's good. I mean, yeah. you know, she's young. Yeah, you know, like literally, like literally, everyone at his at her job is literally like, okay, when do you turn sixteen? Because when you turn sixteen, we can start working you more. When do you turn sixteen? Okay, you turn sixteen, then okay, great. Once you do, we're giving you more hours because you're amazing. So yeah, no, she's freaking great. But she's talking and, about, and, and I do want to urge our listeners. I think it's very, very important. Uh, no matter how how much how much you're tempted um do not ever make occupational humor you cannot come up with anything that the person that is doing that job has not heard before and it's not fucking funny yeah it's funny to you because you're a dick but I did get away from it, get away with it once, because I am tempted every now and then I fall into the trap. Uh, but I went to get bagels uh, on a Sunday morning. Bagel places here are packed at that time. So waiting online, waiting online, you know, all of this. And when I finally got to the counter, I, I looked the girl right in the eyes and said, Hi, do you guys sell bagels? <laughs> and I was so genuine with it that she laughed. I got her. I got her. I made an occupational yeah. joke that she had never heard. Nice. Nobody is as stupid as I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you cannot miss that you are in a bagel shop. Yeah. There are bagels all over. It smells like bagels. People are ordering bagels. <laughs> yeah. Bagels. Mm-hmm. So Emerald comes home and she's uh, complaining about fast food. And I'm like, I, I have no connection here. I have no frame of reference. I'll still listen to you because I like hearing people complain about their jobs. But I have no yeah. connection to that. But then Amber comes home and Amber works in retail. And she's like, oh, my God, I hate work. And I'm like, OK, well, well, talk to me like like. What sucked about today? Oh, well, first we have our clearance sale, and I had to straighten all the clearance sale stuff because everyone always just destroys all of the clearance sale products. And, of course, someone accidentally put something in the clearance section that isn't clearance, and now they're pissed off because they can't get 75% off of this thing. And, oh, man, I hate clearance. And suddenly I'm like, tell me about it, sister! Yeah. It's like, oh my god! Like I, I, I connect to her so much because, despite the fact that she's selling clothes and jewelry and power tools, and I'm selling books and Funko Pops, yeah. there's we're still in retail, you know. And there's like, there's like a thing there. There's so much of what she does that just makes me relate to her, you know. Yeah. It's helping us bond. It's helping us bond. I I need a job with as few people around as possible. Yeah. I don't know what kind of job that might be. Receiving. Uh, re- receiving. Receiving receiving wouldn't be bad, yeah. You know, because after 20 years of doing call center work, Ugh. that's a huge contributor about why I'm fucked up right now. You know? Yeah. You know, getting imagine. getting yelled at like 10 times a day, you know, yeah. for 20 years and you can't say anything back. You cannot say anything back. Absolutely cannot. You no. know, and they'll be telling you about Jesus or who to vote for or, you know, yeah. stop it. You know, I'm on the clock here. Uh, everything I do is judged by time. Yeah. That's one so of the you, things. So, so like, like, uh, you know, like, like, not that I would be bad at it, you know, because, because yeah. 
I swallow everything. I just swallow it down and try to keep as cool as I can. And I, I literally just can't do that anymore. I cannot do that. So fast food and, and retail are both out. Yeah, that's that's one of the that's one of the, the things that makes me different about working as a receiving manager is that the majority of people, as far as I can tell, the majority of people who work in receiving are used to just being by themselves and doing yeah. their job as hard as they can and not having to deal with customers. I yeah. the the last not the last receiving manager that we had, but the receiving manager before that, he literally wouldn't talk to a single customer. If he went out to to bring something to the front register and a customer stopped him, he would just immediately run, basically. Yeah. He was like, I don't talk to customers. That's <laughs> not my job. Let me call the bookseller for you so that they can help you, okay? I can't help you. But I spent, like, what, the first 13 years of my job just helping customers. Yeah. So that's what makes me difficult is that it's weird to me to be in receiving during Christmas. Like, what? You mean to tell me that I'm not going to be helping people during Christmas? That's weird to me. Mm -hmm. But most people who are in receiving are just the sort of people who just don't want to talk with customers. Yeah. That's the majority of people in the receiving department. So you should see if they're hiring a receiving manager. That yeah, might be good. I, I I, 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 I would not last a week. Yeah. You know, receiving might be a good idea. Cause I, I did that for a while when I was younger. So, yeah. you know, but, but yeah. if I had a deal, I wouldn't, I wouldn't last a week. You know, after a week I would just come home, grab my nuts, jump up and down and just screech. And that would yeah. be it. Nice. The, the next episode of the podcast we do that 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 would be everything I do on the podcast. So I'm just holding my nuts, jumping up and down, and screeching. Cool. I think there's that, there's probably a, a you know an audience for that somewhere. Yeah. I would say Japanese website. Mm -hmm. So so my wife is a secret shopper, but she just to be clear, my wife has never seen a secret shop available for my company believe me i've made her look yeah oh so many times but it's frustrating my store has never gotten a 100 percent, and it's starting to piss me off the first time we got a bad score too i was a bit bitter about it because i felt like like uh the people in the store who got who were responsible for us getting a really bad score yeah were like BFF Snapchat buddies with the boss, so I felt like they were kind of laughing it off. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my goodness, can you believe this? She she got us a bad secret job. Isn't that amazing? Did you get that Snapchat I sent you? So it's like, okay, so the people who are your best friends aren't getting into as much trouble as the people who did bad and aren't your best friends. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So we, so we keep it. So but now I gotta tell you, you know, I mean, no offense to Tasha or anything like that, but you, you, you cannot just hire people off of the street for yep. jobs like that and yeah. expect them not to abuse their power. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 I think that it's difficult to hire a secret shopper and have the secret shopper go in without a bias. Yeah. I, 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 I would, I would think if I was a secret shopper, I would be like, okay, this is payback time for every person who is shitty to me. Yeah. You're looking for bad things. I am breaking out white gloves, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I will have your toilet bowl water tested. Right. You know? You're looking for bad stuff. And loving every second of it, yes. Yeah. I have so power we, over these people, and I'm never going to see them again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, we keep getting bad scores, not just our store, but, like, company-wide. And it sucks, too, because... I hate secret shoppers because it means that the corporation doesn't trust us. And yet the secret shoppers aren't looking for employees going above and beyond. They're looking for the bare minimum. So our bad scores are an indicator that we're both right. 
that, yes, the company doesn't trust us and also that the company has every right to not trust us because we're doing bad in the stupid shops. So Mm -hmm. we all suck. But don't worry, because I have a solution. All right. In fact, just this Tuesday, I ran it by my store manager and the, my district manager for really for realsies. I said, I've got the solution for us to get perfect scores. We just get the one person in the store who has a history of getting 100% on secret shops. Uh-huh. And we just make that person work as much as possible. What I'm suggesting is I work open to close every day. What's that? I what if they schedule me to work open to close every single day? Okay. I so I work from nine a.m. to ten p.m. every single solitary day until we get a secret shop. Okay. That's the way we're gonna get a hundred percent. I just need to to be the only person working. And I need to work all the time. I'm basically going to be living in the store now. Yeah. Maybe do some camping in the store. Get a little tent in there. Mm-hmm. Make some s'mores in yeah. the cookbook section. Yeah. And probably use some old adult coloring books to start a fire. <laughs> and I think uh, I, I think I'm going to have a good life for myself. I'm going to live in the bookstore. I'm I'm oh. I'm a I'm I'm a bookstore person now. Well, that is like our genera- our generation's version of uh leaving civilization to go live in the mountains. Yeah. Which yeah. was a very popular theme in the 70s, Grizzly Adams, Jeremiah Johnson, a few others. Yeah. People who just ran away to the mountains. Yeah, I'm going to run away to the bookstore basically. Mhm. We're gonna get a hundred percent. It's gonna be which, me. Which means that in the bookstore, you're you're still obligated to get a Native American friend. Yes, definitely, mm-hmm. definitely. I need to get a native. And so that is it for notes from the bookstore this week. And remember, buoys and gurgles. You too can save ten percent on all of your purchases, and all you have to do is play the game. Cuphead without talking about it on social media. That is actually harder than you would think. I'm talking about the video game Cuphead that has a, that is created stylized as if it's a 1930s cartoon. Oh, okay. It is all over YouTube. It is all over Facebook and Twitter and there's fan art and cartoons and people are going nuts over this game Cuphead. There are people playing it on YouTube and reviews of it and I've seen all of these essays and and articles about is Cuphead too hard? The difficulty of Cuphead, the beauty of Cuphead and once again I just want to say what podcast was talking about Cuphead first? Yes, that was us. We were once again, you had it in your playlist. Yep, we are in the cutting edge. We were first, and here they come again to mm-hmm. jack my style. <laughs> That's a line from a from from a popular from We Are Young, I believe. Uh, the the hit song from the band Fun. We are young, and it's a really good song until you get to the really stupid line. Here they come again to jack my style. I'm like, oh, yeah. Don't you hate that, honey, when they come to jack your <laughs> style? I hate these style jackers. And she's mm-hmm. like, shut up. It's a good song. I just hate that one line. Yeah. There's always that one bad line in a really good song. <laughs> and when you first hear it, you just can't help going by. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good song, and it's popular, and everybody loves it, and yet here they come again to jack my style. So now I try to use that as much as possible, because that line really does fit when it comes to those things that we talk about first, and then suddenly everybody else is talking about it. Everybody's Mm -hmm. obsessing over Cuphead. We were talking about it first. Maxwell, you're here, like, right next to me. Have you seen people play Cuphead on YouTube? You're on YouTube watching people play video games. Have you seen anybody play Cuphead? Yes. You have? Yeah, yeah, it looks like a Bilbo cartoon. You remember Bilbo? Wanna be a member? Wanna be a member? 
Don't get me started about that. Okay. <laughs> I won't get started, started about that. Jeez. Yeah. All right, then. The FGTV. The FGTV. FGTV. What about that made made yeah. Maxwell suddenly become a, an old <laughs> rabbi? I don't know. Oi, don't get me started. Don't get me started, no. Don't get me started on the cuphead there. <laughs> you with your sweatshirt and your funny things. 